Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to put binding onto a quilt, binding that has a little teeny flange, like the little red accent that's showing there. The first step is to cut the binding. So we're going to cut the binding that's going to be used for the flange at one and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that now. Now I'm going to cut the blue binding and this needs to be cut one and one quarter inches wide. I have all my binding pieces cut and I need to sew them into one long piece. So for this type of binding, we are going to want to use mitered or diagonal seams. So I don't want to sew it like this because the seam would be too bulky. So we are going to put the seam in on the diagonal. So I'll take these to the machine and show you how to do that. The easiest way to do this is to cross your pieces and stitch from that intersection where the pieces come together right there right down towards the other corner. You want to have them right at 90 degrees so we don't want them twisted like that. We want them right at 90 degrees and you can see I've moved it up so I won't have any of the selvages in there. You can pin it if you like and all we're going to do is stitch from right there to right there. So I'm just going to hold it and just aim for the other corner. Now you can see that's gonna give us a nice straight piece of binding there and we're going to trim it off to a quarter inch. Trim the little dog ear off. We'll take it to the machine to iron it but you can also finger press it right now if you like. It's nice and flat. So do that with all of your binding pieces. The red piece here, one and a half inches wide, all in one long piece. And I'm just ironing these seams really, really flat. And I'm ironing them all to one side. And if there's a little bit of dog ear left, like there is here, just trim that off. And we're gonna do the same thing with the blue. So the blue, one and a quarter inches, all in one long piece, and all of the seams are gonna face this way. And again, if you see any of the little dog ears left, just trim those off. So iron both of them with all the seams going the same way, all nice and flat. The next step is to stitch a quarter inch seam along this edge. And I'm not going to start with this right up here. I'm going to move it down a couple inches. And the reason I'm going to move it down is because when we come to where these seams are, I don't want them in the same spot. So that's why I slid this down just a little bit so that we won't have extra bulk from the seams all in the same spot. So quarter inch seam and you want to be really precise. So line them up and go slow and careful. It's This is a small binding and so we really need to be precise. So sew it together the whole whole long length. Now we want to finger press the seam allowance towards the blue or towards the smaller piece. So this will really help us when we go to iron it. So I'm opening it with the palms of my hands here and I'm drawing my finger down the seam and I'm making sure that it's sticking that way. You have to press a little bit harder when you come to the seams so that it stays nice and flat. And then we're going to steam press it also, but this makes it nice and open. It's really hard to open these small little pieces and keep them in place. So there's, there's a seam right there. So I'm giving a little extra pressing. And here's the seam in the blue. Again, you have to press it a little bit harder to keep it nice and flat. So do this for the whole long piece. It goes really fast but this step will save you time later. Now we're just going to fold this in half. We're gonna make the raw edges meet here. And just a little bit of that red is gonna be showing. Then we're gonna press it. So I'm gonna press and fold as I go. 
and you want to be real careful that this is nice and even. There's only about an eighth of an inch showing. So you don't want to have, you know, an eighth of an inch some places and a quarter inch some places and even less. So you want to be really careful when you fold it and then iron it nice and flat. And I'm going to use a fair amount of steam. So do this for the whole, the whole binding. Nice and flat, nice and even. I have my quilt that's fresh off of the quilting machine. So what I need to do is trim off the extra backing and batting here. I like to use a clear plastic ruler. And even though my borders were cut perfectly straight, when you quilt it, it always distorts a teeny bit. So I'm going to trim here all the layers. And I'm going to do that all the way around the quilt. So I'm just sliding this into the narrowest part and I'll be trimming a little bit off here and it'll be right about on the edge there. But I want to trim all three layers a little teeny bit. Now we have a nice straight edge, makes it really easy to get that binding on. So I'm going to continue on all the way around the quilt. We're going to stitch our binding onto the quilt from the back side of the quilt. My raw edges are lined up and I'm putting the smaller piece down first. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam. So leave a tail here, leave about six inches, line everything up and use a quarter inch seam and sew right along the edge. Now when you sew, try not to stretch the binding or the quilt. Try to just place it on there and stitch. You do want to be real careful and use a nice straight quarter inch seam. So we're going to stitch this all the way around and I'll show you how to do the corners when we get there. So here's the back of the quilt. We're going to be taking this binding and we're going to be folding it to the front of the quilt like this. So look how nice that's gonna look there. We're gonna have just a little bit of the red showing. So that's where we put that blue down first. It seems counterintuitive, but you put that blue down and it's gonna end up on the front. Most of this red is gonna be hidden. So we're gonna keep stitching towards the corner. Now we're going to stitch to one quarter inch up from the bottom here. So that's about right here. So I'm just gonna stick a straight pin in there so I can see where to stop stitching. I'm not gonna actually stitch over the pin. I'm gonna stop just short and then I'm gonna back tack. You can feed this by hand if you want to get your last couple stitches in. Now I'm gonna back up. Now we're gonna take it off of the machine. We're going to turn the quilt 90 degrees. Now we're going to fold our binding up like this. There's a 45 degree angle here and that fold is pointing right towards the corner of the quilt. Now we're going to fold this down so that the fold is even with the edge of the quilt there and these raw edges are lined up against. Now this is like a little flap here that will fold back and forth and you can see the fold is even there and if we folded it here it's even over there. So my stitching line is coming across here at a quarter inch and I'm going to want to start stitching here at a quarter inch too. So this is the spot where I'm going to want to start stitching right there. So I'm not going to leave that pin in but I'm going to slide this up here till my needles right over it, take the pin out, then I'm going to Move the flywheel by hand so the needle's down in there and I'm gonna go forward and back just a little bit. Again, you can do this by hand if you want. Now we'll continue on with our quarter inch seam. I'm all the way around the quilt with the binding and the only thing left is to attach these and get that last bit on the quilt. There's several methods for doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my seam here a little bit, and then I'm going to sew the two blue parts of the binding together, 
And then I'm going to sew the two red parts together in a different spot so that they don't all line up. I don't want all those seam allowances lining up because I'm going to get too much bulk and I'm going to have a hard time making the seam, the little bitty flange, really, really even. So this is going to be the easiest way for me to do this. So I'm going to take this one out as well and then I'll show you how I'm going to stitch them up. So I'm going to take these two blue parts here and I'm going to put a little seam and I'm going to do my seam straight. So I'm going to cut this one off here and then I'm going to make sure that these are pressed right against the quilt. And I'm going to use a quarter inch seam so I'm going to cut this one a half inch, there's just a half inch overlap. Now I'm going to sew these two little pieces together using a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to finger press this seam open. So I'm just going to open it up, press it open. Now that's laying very smoothly along the edge of the quilt. I'm going to do the same thing with the red, but I don't want the seam right there. I'm going to put the seam up here. I'll need to take this out just a little bit farther. So let's do the red one right here. And again, we'll feed this down. And we're just going to cut it a half inch longer than the other one. And now I'm going to take that little quarter inch seam in the red. We're just putting those right sides together, right along the edges. I'm going to lift this up so I can get it under the presser foot there and just use a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to back pack a little there's a little stress on it. And again, let's finger press this one open. So we're just going to take that seam, press it open, and just draw your fingernails along it. Now I'm going to re-stitch these two pieces of binding right along here. I'm just going to re-stitch that seam. That's where we took it apart, and I'm going to re-stitch it. Make sure those seams are open. And everything's lined up. Alright, now it's back to where it's all stitched up. And we can, we have a nice neat seam here. So let's finger press this away again so that's flat. I'm just doing it against my fingers in the back here. And then if we fold it like that, like we had on the ironing board, draw your fingernail along there. See, it came out nice and neat, and the seam in the red is there, and the seam in the blue is right, right here. And we can get this stitched on, and you will never even know that there was a seam there. So see it's laying nice and flat along here, and we'll just use our quarter inch seam. Now that the binding is all the way around, we're going to want to open this up, and this step is really important. You need to pull it away, and you need to draw your fingernail down there. Now if your fingernails aren't strong, you can use the side of a spoon. You could probably use almost any flat thing here. The idea is to get it pulled away, and then press it with something so that we don't we don't want it pressed like this we want it pulled away we don't want to have a divot there so we want it pulled away and then pressed so I'm pulling and drawing my fingernail so do that all the way around as far as you can in the corners you probably can't get all the way to the corner but pretty close and then just keep going all the way around
I've flipped the whole quilt over, so now I'm working from the top of the quilt. So the binding is going to come over like this, and now we're just gonna have that little teeny bit of red showing. You need to use matching thread, so you need to use red thread on the bottom, and then on the back, you need to use whatever color your quilt is because this stitching line is going to come in over here. So I've got a dark navy thread on the back. So just fold this over just the way you always would with binding. And we're going to be stitching in the ditch. So we're going to be stitching right here between the red and the blue. So you have to stitch slow and careful, but use whatever thread your flange is. So in my case, it's red. So you've got to go pretty slow. Because you want to be in the red, but very close to the blue, in the ditch if possible. Now we're coming to the corner. The easiest way to do this corner is to fold it over here and then we've got a 45 degree fold there and then we're just going to fold this up and we're going to hold all this in place we're just going to make sure we've got a nice 45 degree hold here fold there and then we're going to stitch careful hold everything in place and again you might need to do this by hand so you can go really slow and sometimes lift your presser foot like that so that it doesn't move all that bulk out of the way. So once you're in the corner there, hold it here and then pivot. So we're just gonna pull everything around and keep sewing. Oh yeah, that turned out nice. So we've still got that red going all the way around and a nice 45 degree fold there. All right, I'm gonna continue on and finish the quilt up. I'm so happy with how the binding came out with the little flange. It's honestly difficult physically. It's so thick along the edge here that my arms got kind of fatigued. I might recommend that you do it in several sittings rather than all at one time. But I don't know if you can see the corner there, it came out just perfect and it's so satisfying to have that just that little bit of color right in the middle there you can cut your binding different sizes you don't have to use the size i used and now here's the back side this is why you have to use the matching thread you really can't see the stitching very much there you can so it's a little bit inside of where the binding is and this is a very small binding but i love the way it looks on the front if you're interested in seeing how we made this quilt, we do have that in another tutorial. But for now, have fun with your flanged binding.